Ready for something wild? Here comes Megan to introduce a new set of videos about wildlife that could be in danger. Hey, it's Megan, here to welcome you to the world of wildlife. I decided to start with something big, really big, the biggest of them all. If you haven't guessed yet, I'm talking about elephants. Some African elephants are over 12 feet tall and close to 20,000 pounds. You wouldn't think an animal of that size could pull a disappearing act. But elephants really are disappearing because of their number one predator, people. In this video, you'll meet a woman who's working to protect elephants from human hunters. And she's just like a mother to them. Why do you think saving elephants is so important? Let's find out. Elephants never forget. African elephants may be the largest land animals on Earth, but their numbers are shrinking because humans have encroached on their territory. In more ways than one, adult elephants are targets for illegal hunting or poaching. Thousands of them are killed every year for their ivory tusks, which are used to make carvings and jewelry. Elephants have tight families and losing any relative is devastating. But when a baby elephant's mother is killed, it's even worse. Without its mother's care, a baby elephant can only survive a few days. But some amazing people in the East African country of Kenya are devoted to rescuing stranded babies before it's too late. Thanks to one woman who turned her own backyard into an elephant orphanage. Daphne Sheldrick has been a foster mother to elephant babies for more than 50 years. With the help of a devoted squad of keepers, she's managed to rescue, raise, and release over 90 elephants. And that's not an easy job. Some of the babies are overwhelmed with grief when their mothers are killed. And many, like this two-week-old, are very sick when they arrive. But once they're at the orphanage, they get everything they need to survive and thrive, including all the milk they can drink, which is a lot, more than five gallons a day. They also get excellent medical care. But even more important, each baby has a keeper who stays with the elephant 24-7, just like its mother would. We can't do exactly what the mother can do, but we do something close to that. Like teaching the babies how to take mud baths, how to use dirt as sunscreen, and how to have fun. Soccer, anyone? Come on, here. Roll in, roll in. At the end of the day, each baby gets tucked into a comfy bed in a private room with a keeper sleeping close by, just in case. And once a week, they get the spa treatment, a coconut oil massage. Sweet. But the most important ingredient in a baby elephant's survival? Tender loving care, TLC mm. and a lot of it. Scientists say elephants experience emotions very similar to ours, and Daphne believes the healing begins only when the orphans get to know and love their keepers. FYI, blowing into an elephant's trunk is how he gets to know you. And once he picks up your scent, he'll remember you for life. That's especially true for the babies raised at the orphanage. Even after they are old enough to take care of themselves and go back into the wild, they still come back to visit their old friends. These elephants never forget. I don't know about you, but I can't stand the cold. It's hard to believe there are some animals who love the cold. In fact, they can't survive or thrive unless temperatures dip way, way down below freezing. In this video, you'll see how the frigid temperatures of Antarctica are just right for the penguins who live there. So what do you think climate change would do to the totally cool penguin lifestyle? Think about it as you watch them slide and glide and sometimes collide over the ice. Those little tuxedos must be very warm. On thin ice, the Antarctic may be the coldest place on Earth, with an average temperature hovering around 60 degrees below zero. But for the millions of penguins who call it home, the frigid, frosty climate is totally cool. 
Summer in the Antarctic looks like a penguin playground, filled with ice, snow, and water sports. Whether they're sliding and gliding or deep sea diving, penguins are totally adapted to icy ground and frigid waters with tightly packed feathers for waterproofing and a layer of blubber for warmth, which also helps cushion those hard landings. That's not to say penguins have it easy. A lot of hard work goes into raising a family on this tough terrain. These emperor penguin mothers hand off their eggs to dad, then go to sea in search of food. They fill up on krill, a little shrimp-like creature that lives right under the ice. Meanwhile, the dads spend the long, cold winter balancing eggs and newborn chicks on their feet, huddling to keep them warm against 90-mile-an-hour winds. Some species, like these king penguins, are left alone, waiting for their parents to feed them. And it's a long wait. The adults are gone for months, and some have to trek 40 miles or more to get back to their hungry chicks. That is one happy reunion, followed by a 24-7 feeding frenzy. Where's the food? In the mother's stomach. Cough it up, Mom! Penguin life is always filled with danger from predators, like leopard seals looking for a quick meal. But now, there's a new threat, climate change. Rising temperatures are melting the frozen Antarctic shores, leaving some penguins on thin ice and others stuck in the mud. Plus, the warmer air is believed to cause severe winter storms and rougher seas, making it harder for penguins to fish and melting ice is destroying the underwater habitat of krill, which means less food for penguins. With the ice shrinking more and more every year, some species of penguins are struggling to stay afloat and find new ways to survive. Many won't make it. But the ones who can adapt will still find ways to waddle through tough times in their Antarctic home. The penguin is one tough bird. If oil and water don't mix, then the Gulf oil spill of 2010 proved it in a big way. This accident off the coast of Louisiana was an environmental disaster, poisoning the waters of the Gulf of Mexico and hurting the wildlife that live along its shores. In this video, you'll meet a girl named Olivia who wanted to do something to help. She thought her small effort would only be a drop in the bucket but it turned out to be much, much more. Why was Olivia's simple gesture so successful? Let's watch the video and see. Gulf Bird Watch. Birds, they're Olivia Buller's passion, painting them, learning about them. Now what is that? Great blue heron. And admiring them especially when she visits her grandparents' cottage in Alabama on the Gulf Coast, a favorite habitat for birds like brown pelicans. Yeah, they're very beautiful, elegant creatures. But Olivia's admiration turned to heartache when a disastrous oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico left the beautiful, elegant creatures of the Gulf Coast looking like this. And this. And this. In April 2010, an explosion on an oil rig left 11 people dead and millions of gallons of oil gushing from an underwater well into the Gulf of Mexico. BP, the company in charge of the well, tried for months to plug the leak, but it just kept gushing out as the whole world watched through an underwater camera. It was the worst oil spill in history. As the oil spread, BP tried burning it blocking it, and even sucking it up. But eventually, it reached the shores of Louisiana and other Gulf states, creating an environmental disaster. And a financial one, too. Thousands of fishermen and other people who sell seafood, like crabs and shrimp, were losing their jobs because of the poisoned waters. But for Olivia, knowing that beautiful birds were covered in oil was the hardest part of all. There's oil on the feather. Expert volunteers were working round the clock to rescue and clean up as many birds as possible.
but what could an 11-year-old kid do to help? Olivia decided to paint pictures of birds and sell them. She sent a letter to the National Audubon Society, an organization that works to protect birds and wildlife, and offered to donate all the money she made. She began posting her paintings on the internet and even taking requests. She'd paint any kind of bird and accept any amount of money for the painting. Olivia was determined to make a difference, but she never imagined how far her small effort would go. Far enough to make me feel flabbergasted. Olivia's paintings raised over $100,000, and all of it would go to helping endangered wildlife, like supporting the volunteers who spent hours and hours gently cleaning oil-soaked birds and sea turtles. With their help and Olivia's, thousands of wild creatures have a chance to be wild again. It may be hard to believe, but an ordinary butterfly, the monarch, is able to fly up to 2,000 miles to reach its winter habitat in Mexico. It's a special forest inhabited by millions of monarchs, and how the butterflies know how to get there is a mystery that even baffles biologists. But the monarch's amazing migration could be threatened if the Mexican forests aren't protected. Watch the video and ask yourself why the monarch migration is so important to the people of Mexico. Flight of the Monarch. The monarch may be one of the most common butterflies in North America, but it's anything but ordinary. After they emerge from a case called a chrysalis, most monarchs live only two to six weeks. But monarchs born at the end of the summer are on a very different path. Late summer monarchs live about eight months, long enough to take the journey of a lifetime. They can't survive the cold winter, so these monarchs go south, flying up to 3,000 miles from the U.S. and Canada to the forests of central Mexico. Every year, new monarchs fly to the same place. How do they know how to get there? Even biologists like Chip Taylor can't explain this mysterious migration. It's moving south, and somehow it finds its way to Mexico. Could you do that? Well, maybe with a map. But the monarch is just using the wind and its insect instincts to navigate. It flies up to 100 miles a day over every kind of terrain, braving wind, rain, and sometimes miles of open water. Whew. And that's assuming it doesn't get caught by a frog, or a spider, or this guy. Eventually, millions of monarchs join the migration, flying in swarms so big you can actually see them on weather radar. Meanwhile, down in Mexico, the locals plan a hero's welcome. The arrival of the butterflies is a sacred tradition here, and every year the villages prepare for monarch madness. When the butterflies finally arrive, there's a huge celebration with tourists from around the world joining in the fun. But for the monarchs, it's time for a well-deserved rest. They head for the forest and huddle together like thousands of leaves on each branch. They stay this way for about five months, where the trees will keep them warm, dry, and safe. Some people fear that this amazing habitat won't be safe forever. Even though these special forests are protected by the Mexican government, loggers have cut down thousands of trees here. It's illegal, but it's done in secret. The government, scientists, and ordinary people are working together to solve this problem and to preserve this unique part of their country's heritage. And that'll be good news for the monarchs when they wake up from their winter's nap. Now you see it, now you don't. This topic is done and it's time to move on. Good job.